Shalom everyone, grace and peace be unto you. It is indeed a great privilege for me to be back to share the word that the Lord has laid on my heart with you, his people. I pray that you will be blessed. And in the meantime, I'm going to ask if you are really blessed by the content of these teachings that you would like, subscribe and share with your contacts so they too can benefit from the word of God as we grow together as a people. Last time when we met, I mentioned that on the Hebrew calendar, we have entered a new year, and it's the year 5782, 5782, which is very significant on that calendar because it is also called um, the Shemitah year when God instructed Israel to every seven years that they should rest the land they should do no work physical work that is on the land and that is a physical principle that they have applied until today for us the people of god um for us we um can apply spiritual principle to this instruction that was given um we learn to rest to lay down the troubles <clears throat> and the cares of life that we so often take up and carry you know we tend to run with these things it's gonna be a great year <clears throat> i'm sorry if we are able to see supernaturally and this is what we want i want to encourage you to do just to take your eyes off that which is physical and look at that which is supernatural right so it may not seem that way to you but yes it is um it's a year of of, of blessing it's a year of supernatural blessing it's a year of rest it's a year of release it's a year when we put our faith to work when we put our trust and our confidence that god is able to see us through and it doesn't matter how dark the situation may look god is able amen so today i want to be <clears throat> i want to be talking i want to be sharing with you on life i want to be sharing with you on the topic choose life my spirit is drawn to Deuteronomy chapter 30. And in this, um, from verse um, 15 through to 16, and I, I will be reading it. Moses is having this discussion with the children of Israel as they were about to enter into the promise, I mean, to hand over to Joshua, who would now take them into the promised land. And Moses here is going through basically reinforcing the laws that have been taught from the beginning of the book, from the Torah coming up. And here they are in, in Exodus chapter, sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 30. And Moses said, See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. So, <clears throat> we have to make important decisions and choices in life, and we do them every day. We do them every day. But the decisions and the choices we make many times does not impact our lives the way we desire them or we wish they would work out for us 
from the beginning of creation, we see that God empowered man with the power of choice, right? And we read that in Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 to 16. And it says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die it just dawned on me that it's the same verses 15 and 16 that was read from deuteronomy is the same 15 and 16 in genesis chapter 2. so <clears throat> the tree of life let us bear this in mind that the tree of life um was also in the garden and we read that in verse 9 the torah tells us that the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden it was not hidden it was in clear sight but we would see that from that time in history until now man has been making poor choices even when the best choice is pronounced in our very eyes so as a result of poor choices, man was driven out of the Garden of Eden. And we tend to look at this event as harsh punishment. But what we see, if we what we see happening here is God extending his mercy and love to man, right? To the extent that he he made them comfortable garments. God close man to show that he still loved them despite their sin despite their disobedience so god loved man to the extent that he would not allow them to remain in the garden to eat from the tree of life and to live forever in their fallen state so god had to release them from the garden to protect the tree of life and not only that to protect themselves as they would come to learn and understand um, the love of God and how forgiving he is. He, he, he didn't discard them. He didn't throw them away. You know, there's a song that we, we, we sing. Um, it says, there is not one broken vessel that God can't mend. That may be you today. You may feel that way today. You may feel broken. You may feel as if you're at the point that you cannot be mended. Nobody can help you. But I want to tell you today, that's not so. God will not, never ever throw you away. He is, is a potter of our souls. And he is able to put back the broken pieces of our lives together. So what we see as we talk about brokenness and put coming back together is that repentance is, is a required condition for fellowship with God. We need to understand the power of repentance because man cannot survive without repentance. We cannot live without repentance. The point is man sin, yes? The word of God says, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 20, um, 6 verse 23. Man sin, but man can come back. And God allows him the opportunity to do so. God allows the opportunity for us to return to the state of spirituality. He allows the, the opportunity to return to fellowship and he, and he allows us the opportunity to return to paradise, but the choice is up to us. The choice is up to us. 
as in the Garden of Eden, when God told Adam he can eat from all the trees in the garden except the tree of knowledge and good and evil. So we see in Deuteronomy chapter 30, Moses is preparing the people to hand over the people basically to Joshua because Joshua now is going to take them into the promised land, the land of Canaan, right? They were now going to be moving under Joshua's leadership. But here Moses was outlining, reminding them of the commandments, reminding them of the covenant that was made earlier back in the book of Exodus. He also outlines the catastrophe that would befall the nation if and when they become disloyal to God and forget his covenant relationship. So throughout scripture, we see that allegiance to God brings blessing and sinful behavior brings curse. It still amazes me that there are so many persons who are running down some stuff. It still amazes me that there are so many persons who are influenced easily in believing that they to be blessed, they just need to sow seed. And they can live anyhow. They can be break the commandments. They can be, I mean, do anything they choose. And all they need to do is sow seeds and they are blessed. It still amazes me that there are so many people with itching ear that is running after that kind of teaching. But a key point of interest is the fact that although man has a power of choice, Moses, man has a power of choice, but Moses is making a recommendation for the people or to the people, for the people to choose life. It's God gives us a choice. Life or death, blessing or cursing, we get to decide. Hmm? We get to decide. God allows us to decide which way we want to go. Just as Adam and Eve were given the choice between the two trees, the one leading to life and the other to death, so we are given the choice between two paths. It's the way to life that is lit by the word of God, that is lit by the lamp of God that the psalmist David spoke about. Your, your, um, your word is like a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what the word of God is to us. It leads us in the right direction, but we now have to choose wisely. So let us choose life. That's what Moses was saying to them. Choose life, he said, so that you will live. Choose life so that you will live. Right? Um, okay, choose life so that you will live. You and your offspring to love the Lord your God, to listen to his voice, and to cleave to him, for he is your life and the length of your days. And so, people of God, we know that outside of God and Yeshua, there is no life. The only time we have life is when we come into covenant walk with him, right? So the choice you make will have implications, not only for you or for your benefit, but also for your offspring, for generations to come, right? That's what Moses was saying. The choice you make now will not only affect you in your time, but for the generations to come, the decision you make now will also have impact upon them, whether in a positive or a negative way. And so we so often talk about generational blessings and curses. 
because of our choices. So Moses encouraged the people. It's the offer of life or death. And it was not just physical life. But it was life eternal where they are going to receive the fullness of the promise that was made to their forefather, Abraham, in the earlier days. And then he encouraged the people to love God. How do we love God? How do we really love him? Not merely out of emotions. Yeah, because so often we get caught up in our emotions and it is all about emotions. But we have to be intentional. We have to be intentional where the, the object of our love, we know who the object of our love is and no one else or nothing else matters. We must know who the object of our love is directed to. So look at it. In the Garden of Eden, Adam disobeyed God's instruction resulting in spiritual death. Of course, we know this story. Adam blamed Eve for their spiritual downfall and then Eve blamed the serpent and then that is how we operate the blame game. We never always learn to take responsibility of our actions, our behavior. We tend to pass on the blame, right? But God gave the instructions specifically to Adam. And so with this, I want to say that we must be careful as to how we make choices because we must take responsibility for the choices we make in life. Adam failed to exercise his responsibility, right? So Eve took the apple to him. He failed to investigate what was being offered and to realize that when he had to choose between pleasing God and pleasing the person who would only offer momentarily pleasures, his first allegiance belonged to God. His first allegiance had to be God. And so, people of God, I just want to remind us today, our first allegiance is to God. Let us be careful who we are listening to. Let us be careful who, are, who we allow to speak into our lives. Not everybody is to be a part of what God has called you to be. So we have to be very proactive. In, in guarding our eye gates and our ear gates, what we see, what we hear, because we are easily influenced by what we see and by what we hear. And as a result, we see that, that as a result of that one action, Adam and Eve, they fell from their spirituality because God made them perfect in the Garden of Eden. So we talk about the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. What is the tree of life? And let us look at what is a tree? A tree is alive. It grows. It is a part of nature. It provides shelter and it bears fruit. So we talk about we have some trees that are fruitful trees, right? And as believers in Messiah, we are called to be fruit bearing trees we talk about the fruit of the spirit it is both living and it brings life to its surrounding that's tree right recently i went outside of my, our home and we had this lovely pear tree it was just so loaded and the pears were like sweeping on the ground a very fruitful tree so the, the, the tree of life in the garden is equivalent to the Torah. The Torah is the tree of life, the source of everything that is good. So what is the Torah? The Torah is the word of God, right? It is God's and specifically the five first books of the Bible. Specifically, why? Because those books detailed 
God's instruction for humanity. God revealed himself to humanity. God established and set forth the blueprint for redemption for man. He set forth his purpose. And it is in there we see that Yeshua, the Messiah, would come to save his people. Right? So what have happened after the fun, the books after that, each of those books speaks of repentance, each of those books speak of returning, because what we see is that man disobey and continue to disobey. So the prophets are always called up by God to tell the people to remember to keep the Torah. Remember to maintain my laws. Remember, remember that if you walk out of covenant then you pay there's a price to pray to pay for such action and so we read about the tree of life also in we read about the tree of life in the book of genesis we read about the tree of life in the book of proverbs and we read about the tree of life in the book of revelation so let us hear what the wise man solomon says in proverbs chapter 3 one to four solomon is writing he says my son do not forget my torah so in our english bible you're going to see my commandments right it's the same thing do not forget my torah but let your heart preserve my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace Will they add to you? There is nowhere else we are going to find peace but in the word of God. He said, do not be, do not let kindness and truth forsake you. He said, bind them around your son. I'm sorry, around your neck. Bind them around your neck. Write them on your heart the tablet of your heart, the table of your heart. So you will find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Right? He further says in, in Proverbs chapter 3, 18, she is a tree of life, referring to wisdom in that Torah is wisdom. She is a tree of life to those who grasp her, whoever holds fast to her, will be made happy. In, 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 in chapter 3, verse 16, he says, long life is in her right hand, in the hand of authority. He said, long life is in her right hand, riches and honor is in her left. But in verse 13, he says, whoever despises the word will pay for it. Whoever despises the word will pay for it, but who he who rejects a command, I'm sorry, he who obeys and respects a command will be rewarded, right? And he says, the Torah of the wise is a spring of life to turn, to turn from the snares of death, people of God. We need life. There is one place to go, and it's the life giver. There is no other place. There's a place, there's a narrow gate, as Yeshua taught. He said the narrow gate leads to life eternal. But there's a broad road that leads to destruction. He says many are on the narrow gate. But on the broad gate, a lot because people are going after the wrong things, people are making wrong choices, and they are ending up at a place that it is never God's intention for them to end. So we see that. Um, ex so we see this was exactly what um, Moses was teaching the people that the fullness of life, the fullness of life, is in obeying the instructions as is given by God. Right? To enter into the, into the physical promised land of Israel, for them it comes with obedience. For us as believers in Yeshua, our Messiah, to enter eternal life comes with obeying God's holy instructions 
as well as is indicated in the Torah. It doesn't stop at believing. Yeah? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Yes, but it doesn't stop at believing. We are encouraged by Yeshua. We are encouraged by the apostles of his time. We are told to be doers of the word, not only hearers, but to be doers also of the word. And so Yeshua Jesus is our Messiah. He's the living Torah, right? Um, in St. John chapter 1, we read that the word was made flesh and dwell among us. And we behold his glory, the glory as of the only begotten, full of grace and truth. He is the way. That's what he says. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. We need somebody to guide us in the way, in the way, in the truth and the life. Yeshua is the fullness of the Torah. He is the word made flesh, as I said before. And he came, his purpose, he came to lead us back to his father. He came to restore that which was lost in the Garden of Eden. He came to be the second Adam to restore the brokenness of humanity, right? But it only happens through repentance. It is only when we acknowledge that as a people that we continue to sin and fall short of his glory. It is only when we make right choices. It is only when we get to the place as the psalmist David in Psalm 51, when he, he acknowledged his sin, he acknowledged his shortcoming. He acknowledged the fact that he broke the, um, the covenant, but he had a repentive heart. He was able to turn back to God. He was able to return and to say, search me, O God, know my heart, know my thoughts. He acknowledged his wrong, his faults. And today it is also for us to do the same thing. To return to have a repentive heart you know as we read through the, the gospel mess the gospel the gospel um, books in the New Testament Yeshua's message he didn't come with a new message you know he didn't come with a new message different from the prophets of the scripture he didn't he came with the same message to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He came with the same message to say, turn around from your evil. He came with the message of Torah, right? He came with the message for man to know there is only one way to enter into this, into the promised land. And it is through now repentance. We must repent, acknowledge him, repent of our wrongs and return back to him. You know, in the time of Israel, in the book of Judges, it says that every man in Israel did as they please, as they see fit in their own eyes and in their own heart. People of God, we don't want to get to the place where we do as we like, and it is what it is what we see, and it is how we see it, and that is how it is going to be. No, we want to come into obedience to the word of God who want to walk in fellowship with him and so the message today is the same as it was then we are called to repent we are called to return and we are called to make teshuva the Hebrew word for repentance not only to believe but to return to the God of our forefathers to return to the, our first love, to return to covenant, to return to the very confession of our faith, to return to God in righteousness and in holiness. He is calling his people back to that place. You know, the prophet Jeremiah wrote, he said, seek for the old path. And when you find it, walk in it. What is the old path? Yes, the old path is the path 
of Torah is the path of God's instruction, is the path that leads to eternal life. It's the path that Moses was teaching the people in Exodus chapter 30 as he encouraged them to choose life. Choose life and live. Amen. Choose life and live. In, in verse 11 of chapter 30, he says, What I am commanding you to do is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up into the heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into the heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey. No, he said the word is very near in your heart. It is very near in you. It is in your mouth. Amen. And it is in your heart so you can obey it. Yes, people of God, it is in our mouth and it is in our heart. Yes, we can, not in our own strength, but by means of the Holy Spirit who will continue to empower our lives. Right? And so I encourage you, I encourage you to choose wisely. To choose wisely. The tree of life, as I said, is also um, documented in, in the book of Revelation. Because the enemy cannot win. We must understand that the enemy cannot win us. He cannot. God is very strategic. He knows the end from the beginning. And so he set in place everything for us his people to walk the narrow path of life to lead us to the tree of life in revelation chapter 22 14 um this is what the apostle john writes he said blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city we need a washing we need a cleansing. We need a scrubbing. My God, our garments are so spotted. We need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb so that we may have the right to the tree of life. Not It is only those who are clean will partake of the tree of life. In Revelation 22, verse 2 again, he says, Down the middle of the great street of the city, Eat on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing the twelve crops of the fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nation. My God. You see, people of God, when we get into paradise, what was lost in the book of Genesis is regained. All right? When we get into paradise, there will not even be sickness there because the word of God said the leaves of the tree, the tree of life, they are for the healing of the nations. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. If you have an ear today, I want you to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to your heart. He is calling us to return to him he is calling us to make the right choices he is calling us to choose life he is calling us to leave the graveyard situation he is calling us to turn back to him that's what he's calling us to do the apostle john says to him who overcome to him who overcomes i will grant to him to eat from the tree of life which is in the garden, the paradise of God. So, so we see that we just don't, we can't, we, we can't get there anyhow. We have to walk the straight and narrow. And Moses said, it is not too hard. It is not up in the skies. It is not across the seas. It is in your mouth. Yeshua said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is in your heart. The Spirit of God indwells us. 
and the Spirit of God bring conviction to us and the Spirit of God is teaching us the way of truth the Spirit of God is teaching us the way of Torah the Spirit of God is teaching us the way of righteousness and right now in this time nothing else is gonna do it people of God but that we come into relationship is it is only when we come back to that place to acknowledge him and to know that he is the God eternal the creator of the heavens and the earth today as I leave I pray that you will choose well I pray that you will choose wisely and I pray that you and your family and generations to come will benefit from the choices that you will make and I encourage you as Moses encouraged the people choose life and be blessed thank you for listening until we meet again God bless you Shalom